Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Andy. And I would like to conclude the government side of this debate. Uh, thank you very much for the speeches so far. This has been a very enlightening um, process we are having here this evening. First, I would like to rebuttal against some of the arguments just posed here. And then I will not present anything more new to you. I will simply summarize this debate and show you why we are right. <laughs> so, I would like to start um, by, by going back to the argument about how internationals will help Finland be more competitive. But currently that's not actually the case if you consider the previous arguments from the opposition about how we, it is not in fact competitive enough compared to the UK, the US, other parts of the world. So what we are proposing is that the tuition fees will be the booster to provide the competitive fuel that we need through marketing, advertisement, what, what we need to show that this system is worth paying for. And that's how the other universities, elite, top elite universities have become how they are today. Secondly, when we are talking about internationals um, leaving Finland and becoming ambassadors for the country, encouraging more to come, does that really happen if they are staying here and never graduating and taking forever to, to study in their programs? We don't believe that uh, the tuition fees would bring such a a detrimental effect in terms of speeding up the process because actually the courses here are already of a generous enough length and they are of those lengths for a reason. It is feasible to graduate in time and why not? Even more motivation if you have to pay more to stay more, then graduate. And uh, thirdly, I would like to say that actually in general I will come back to this later, that talking about the lives of the individuals student individuals is just presenting subjective arguments. This is not, we are not talking about that. We are talking about the issue of tuition fees in the current climate. We need to be adaptable and changing in the current day. This is not how it is at the moment. And in terms of the fact that maybe by having the tuition fees there will be some kind of imbalance with the EU and the non-EU students, well, as we have proved before, we feel that this will help us actually in the EU to create our own elite in, in terms of competition in the world. And not only that, but if you're talking about equality, it will still exist just within the EU. Later, please. And, and lastly, in my rebuttaling, I would like to say about the point concerning that when you come to university, you don't only get education. Very true. In actual case, that means there's even more worth paying for. So, on that point, I would like to sum up um, the debate. And basically, this has consisted of two sides. Not the government and the opposition, but the realists and the idealists. Of course, we would like an ideal world where education is free and we don't have to compete, Question, please. and we don't have to manage our time and uh, focus in the stressed world. However, this is not how it is, and I will prove you in a moment why, but first I can take your question. How much do I have to pay to make friends? <laughs> We're not putting a value on this for you. You are in the EU, don't worry. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Um, this, is, this is not an ideal situation, we grant you that. But in the current scenario as it is, as it stands at the moment, we need uh, some kind of solution, even if it happens to be temporary. We don't know that. But based on the arguments that we have heard today, and what was posed here, were consistently subjective and ill-structured. We provided you with a systematic approach to showing you, in a very clear structure, structure the social political reasons why this is a good idea, the economical reasons why this needs to happen, and also the educational advantages that can be gained from tuition fees. So to recap on those points, if we are talking about uh, EU structure and the benefits that EU citizens can have, 
and the competition that this can create. This defies, actually, what was said by the opposition about how we, we need internationals to become competitive. As I said before, this is not working currently. We have a lot of internationals here in, in Finland, and it has not made Finland any more competitive. In fact, this was even proved by the opposition that this is apparently not an attractive country to come to. So, if the only reason is for free education, then we are attracting the wrong people. And secondly, we prove to you in the social political reasons that in the EU we have standards. And we feel that, of course, the EU is not perfect, but we can minimize the risk coming in here, and particularly in Finland, because it is such a strong country in education, it is not worth risking this. We want to maintain the social stability that exists here, and that is the main purpose that we can say in the social political side. Yes. Do you understand that you are presuming that all the universities outside Europe are of rubbish quality, whereas at the same time you think that all universities inside Europe are perfect? Thank you. I am not making such assumptions. I would not like to say it in that way. But I believe that this, this is not the issue that we are talking about right at this time. We are not trying to create an, an extra problem. We are trying to solve a problem. If there is a better s solution, uh, we think that it's not going to compete with ours. So, and to summarize, and the other points that were made uh, concern, concerning the economical situation at the moment, Finland is not immune from the crisis happening. Yes, we need to prioritize. This is one way of doing so, while still maintaining some level of equality that the opposition so avidly seeks. And continuing on that point, uh, while the opposition told us that, in fact, we would have no gain um, in this uh, pursuit, we believe the opposite, actually. We need this in order to sustain the universities that we have, because, in fact, they are at risk at the moment. There is a huge threat at the moment that the universities here cannot be sustained as they are standing at the moment. Even if the application, amount of applications decrease, we still believe that there will be enough to provide at least some economical fuel to even uh, inject into the marketing, the scientific research, enough to keep a more sustainable impact on the universities. And uh, concluding on that point, uh, we feel that free education is not the only good thing that Finland can offer, in fact. In terms of other things, there, you, there's uh, security, safety, the culture, high standard of living, and of course the outstanding educational system. So while we, we would like to maintain some benefits for the EU citizens, we believe that it's viable that the non-EU should contribute something more to this system that is being offered here. And on that point, that will take me to the educational advantages that we brought to the floor, that we would, in, in fact, create more spaces in the courses if we have more money. Whether they are taken up by EU, non-EU, doesn't matter. The fact is that we will have more people coming here, more people appreciating the system, more people graduating, and hopefully more people paying into the tax system. Uh, secondly, this is a reputation that needs to be built. It doesn't come from nowhere. People know of Finland in education as somewhere to go for free. This is not something that we want to advertise like that. The, the universities in the world, are the, the best ones are worth paying for, and why shouldn't this one be as well? Thirdly, we feel that it is really important that students take responsibility for their studies. And of course, while some do, there is a clear um, percentage of students that do, do not. And perhaps that the, there is, of course, I have mentioned before, the problem that there are not 
maybe enough people, it's, it's not a sustainable system as it is at the moment. And one of those reasons, one of the reasons for that is because the people are accepting places here. This is a backup for them. They're accepting places here and then not coming here. And this is a huge problem in this system. If you started paying fees, you would start paying as soon as you accept the place. Then that problem would be eradicated. And secondly, we are just preparing people for the real world, in fact, ladies and gentlemen. This is not an idealist world, I'm sorry to say, opposition. We have proved to you that we are realistic and we should prepare people for this. And this is one method of doing so. And on that note, I would like to end my summary and government side of this debate and hope that you can now appreciate why this is a good idea to introduce tuition fees for non-EU students in Finland. Thank you very much. summarize a debate in which opportunism and exploitation of education with questionable intentions and results that we have underlined that will be hazardous for the society, education and for the people worldwide is beaten by the very values of this country, by the very funding principles of Finland as well as the philosophy of education itself. During this game we had two questions with opposition. Is this for benefit of Finland and is it any good from educational perspective? We answered negatively to both of these questions. I will start my summary, my summary by uh, answering all those assumptions and misunderstandings by the team of the government. First of all, the Prime Minister came here wondering what kind of Europe we want. He wants uh, a Europe leading in mind. A Europe, though, that would show a hostile face to all other countries. As we have underlined many times, showing a bad face to our colleagues outside EU is not a policy we would like to follow. It's not a way to build the future for Europe. At the same time, if you want to build a European League of Amazing Minds, I should tell you that bright minds are also born outside the European Union borders. And you are naive if you don't want to, put the, to use these minds into our leaders of mind inside EU. Quite the opposite, you should like to bring those bright minds, to bring, him, to bring them here and baptize them with the very values of the European and Finnish culture and this is how you're going to make them want to stay if this is your uh, objective. Uh, so we should want more people to come here, we should want to show them our culture and our civilization and be benefit for those, from those bright minds. Secondly, we clarified that this is a kind of an illusion that uh, Finland has amazing rates. Uh, the ratings of the universities of Finland are still not that good. And multiculturalism is a key factor to raise those places even more. The multiculturalism to, to which you are turning your back on. I'm going to... No, 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 not at that point, sir. Uh, going more to uh, detailed um, rebuttaling of what they told us, um, secondly, they chose to talk about filter and water. First of all, as, uh, taking as an assumption that all the other universities outside uh, EU are not as good as some of the lower quality universities of EU, is an assumption we are to be made from the place 300 and something that you told us that the best Finland university states. And uh, secondly, those uh, assumptions about sheet, filter and good and bad water are non-educational, so we believe that they have no place in this debate. Secondly, um, you talked about security and risk management. Well, it's funny to say that when, as we underline, this will raise the risk for the universities as less students are going to come, adding their knowledge and their uh, differences in culture that would improve innovation and research in universities because knowledge and education is the synthesis of the different minds that we bring together and that you are uh, raising the risk as Dimitra underlined about, sorry, about the society bringing you brilliantly the example of Turku. How would Turku be without all of us being here and spending to the society? Uh, they chose afterwards to play the card of the economical crisis. 
fairly hard to choose if you are up to create an educational and knowledge crisis worldwide, as we very detailed explained you. And what is more, we should underline that in time of crisis, we are very willing to give our rights, rights that we never retrieve afterwards. And not in that point, thank you, sir. And last but not least, we are happy to live in a country that believes that education is the highest blue chip. That education is where we should spend money because in education we invest money for the future. If you want to reduce expenses, find them any other place. Um, afterwards, they talked to us about how this measure will bring funding to the universities. My colleagues explain you why this will be inconclusive because people will have less uh, reasons to come to Finland, because Finland is not like any other country. It's a country of a reputation of a very, very expensive European country, and a country with difficult weather conditions. A country which universities do not have the reputation of UK or Germany. So if someone has to choose between two universities and two countries, Finland and UK, for example, with the same amount of money to pay, do you think that they will uh, choose Finland? Not on that point, sir. Um, in another point, um, uh, they talked to us about the effectiveness of the system. If you want to make an, uh, a system that already works quite well, more effective, then work on the system. Don't try to abolish the system to build another on top of it that has many problems, uh, all the problems that we've under underlined. You are willing to compromise, let me conclude please, you are willing to compromise uh, no, that didn't mean that you have the right now. Uh, you are willing to compromise knowledge and production of knowledge within universities for the sake of speed. We say that this is not education, this is something else. You are turning a blind eye to the fact that there are people who are not learning as fast as others. And you are going just to force them to pay more because they don't, I don't know, learn by heart as, as good as their other colleagues. And I will answer your question in a second. Um, and we wonder how this is educational at all. I mean, do you want a, a doctor that will have rushed his studies out because he didn't have more money to pay? I'm listening to you, sir. Okay, so all this time you are talking about the wonderland of having money and giving this money somewhere else, maybe in education, because it's important. We don't have money. If outside the EU citizens don't pay for this, the Finns should pay for this. So what do you choose? Do you have to the students of Finland to pay for the education instead of someone else coming here and going away without paying any taxation? We don't have thank money you, anymore. Thank you, sir. We, thank them you. Uh, we have already explained to you how this money will never come here because those people are not going probably to choose Finland. And we have also explained to you how society is going to pay for the mistaken measure of yours, because less students will come here who are able to spend in the pubs and the pizza places that you blame so much. And let me remind you that these are Finnish taxpayers and they care about the money that students from abroad bring to Finland. And uh, you also told us that, going back to our rebuttal, that um, you have to prepare people because it, it's a jungle out there. My colleague told you then, throw them to the lions. What people should do in the universities was first of all to build the character because we mostly need good people rather than rust out doctors. It's very important to build uh, complete people rather than building some kind of a complete league of minds. Going now back to our argumentation. Finland is a country that was built upon values of equality, of rights to all people and with high respect to education. Throughout my rebuttaling and throughout all our speeches, we think that you have clearly understood that this measure is coming on the contrary with any uh, values of this country. Finland does not have the reputation to compete with other universities worldwide. To, feel, to build this reputation, we believe that these tuition fees are a huge obstacle because they won't let more people come here and contribute to the Finnish uh, university and education. Uh, also, we believe that uh, we need many ideas and education as a key point has culture and uh, the synthesis of the different knowledges that will help everyone. And last but not least, we underline how those people are coming here, baptized in Finnish civilization, acquire knowledge from Finland and they will be the best Finish uh, the best ambassadors for Finland worldwide, not on that point, sir. 
No, you consumed 50 seconds of my speech. Are they going to be the best uh, ambassadors for Finland? Why do you need foreign affairs when you have people that came here, experienced how, what an amazing country Finland is, and they will bring back that to their homes? Or even better, they will be willing to be and stay here to contribute to Finland. To Finland. Are you no, thank you. I have to conclude my speech. All your questions are about your own mistakes that we have underlined so clearly. And for the reasons that I are about the very values and the principles of this country built in education and for educational philosophy as well, we have already proven you that tuition fees are not an option. Thank you. So I don't even dare to tell the whole world. You are all biased. <laughs> but yeah, that is how it's done. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's how cruel cool you should be. So she could even not accept even one question from us. <laughs> this is yeah, you should not feel sorry about us. This is how they should have done it.